Hannah, you're really wearing that dress like you're doing it a favor. Oh, God. That's a line. <laughs> Me sitting over there for the past two hours not being able to take my eyes off of you is a fact. I mean, there's lots of beautiful women in this bar, your friend included. Hi. I love you. But I can't take my eyes off of you. That's a fact. It's not a line. Have you been hit on before? Or have you yourself used a pickup line on someone? Did it work? Do you think it worked for him? Well, join us on our latest Cinefall episode to find out, and be sure to visit our Funday website for more. Today, Lan. Today is Tuesday. Commercial. Popular tourist. I have to wait for Klee. So he or she is at the Columbia Towers Hotel gift store. So he's at this hotel's gift store. So he has to buy things. Okay. So let's take this chance and listen to the. Learn, make life more enjoyable. Fun day English. What's up, movie fans? I'm Wade, your cinephile host. Crazy Stupid Love is a 2011 American romantic comedy film, starring Steve Carell, Ryan Gosling, Julianne Moore, Emma Stone, Marissa Tomei, and Kevin Bacon. It follows a recent separated man who seeks to rediscover his manhood and is taught how to pick up women at bars. We kick off with Kel, a middle-aged man, at dinner with his wife. You okay? You seem a little off. Yeah, I'm just trying to think about what I want. Yeah, me too. Why don't you say it at the same time? One, two, three. I want a divorce. Kel is left speechless. On the way home, Emily reveals that she had an affair with her coworker, but Kel didn't want to hear any of it. So he opens the car door and jumps out of the moving car. Emily stops the car and rushes over to him. Kel says he'll move out and sign the papers as long as she stops talking about it. After moving out, a defeated Kel begins to frequently visit an upscale bar, talking loudly about his divorce until he attracted the attention of a young man named Jacob Palmer. Jacob, a womanizer who beds different women each night, was recently rejected by a woman named Hannah. Jacob takes pity on Kel and offers to teach him how to pick up women. Permission to speak candidly, sir. I think you've already gone there. You're sitting there with a supercuts haircut. You're getting drunk on watered-down vodka cranberries like a 14-year-old girl, and you're wearing a 44 when you should be wearing a 42 regular. Honestly, I don't know if I should help you or I should euthanize you. Cal, you got a kind face. You got a good head of hair. You seem like a nice guy. I want to help you. I'm going to help you rediscover your manhood. Jacob tells Cal to meet him at a mall on Thursday. After getting babysitter Jessica to watch the kids, Cal heads to the mall. The first thing Jacob does is toss Cal's New Balance sneakers off the top roof, and they begin his transformation. While looking at jeans, Cal says he's all set and wonders why couldn't they have just gone to the gap. Jacob immediately walks off. What are you doing? Cal, be better than the gap. Be better than the Gap. Say it. I'm better than the Gap. Come on. God. Stop slapping me. Really. Okay. Beautiful. <laughs> Cal gets a new hairdo to finish up the touch. And just like that, his physical transformation is complete. They head to a bar to put Cal to the test. But night after night, Jacob is the one who ends up with the girl. Meanwhile, Emily gets hit on at the office by David Linhagen, the person she had an affair with, but rejects his advance, while Robbie is head over heels for his babysitter Jessica, but also gets rejected. So he cusses during his class and gets sent to the office where his mom was called in. She takes him back to the office and he meets David Linhagen. So David, I hear you broke up my parents' marriage. You are David Linhagen, right? Linhagen. Yeah. Here's the thing, Lindhagen. Hagen. Whatever. In the end, she winds up back with my dad. He's a better guy than you are in every category, and she still loves him. He's not going to give up on my mom, just like I'm not going to stop sending Jessica text messages that make her feel uncomfortable. After a few awkward attempts to talk to women, Cal successfully seduces Kate at the bar. This experience gives Cal the confidence to approach other women, and Cal begins to emulate Jacob's example successfully. 
Eventually, Cal and Emily meet again at their son Robbie's parent-teacher conference, where Emily is impressed by Cal's newfound confidence and fitted clothes, and slowly, they rekindle their romance. I'm really mad at you for what you did. But I'm mad at myself too. Because I should not have jumped out of that car. I should have fought. Because you fight for your soulmates. Emily admits she misses Cal as well. Their reunion goes well until Robbie's teacher is revealed as Kate, who is visibly shocked and upset at Cal for not calling. It's eventually revealed that Cal slept with her, which causes Emily to storm off. Cal chases after her and inadvertently confesses to sleeping around with multiple other women since their separation, causing Emily to leave in disgust. Meanwhile, Hannah, a recent law school graduate, is offended by her boyfriend, as he offered her a position as a permanent lawyer instead of proposing to her. She returns to the bar where she originally rejected Jacob's advances, finds him, kisses him, and asks if he wants to take her home. Jacob takes her back to his luxurious home and shows her his big dirty dancing move. But instead of becoming more physically intimate, they spend the night talking and laughing. <laughs> Do you have that? That mold that makes pants. cakes look like <laughs> I have pants just for my calves. Calf pants. <laughs> they chat until they both fell asleep. In the meantime, Robbie continues to make numerous grand gestures to try to win the heart of Jessica, who actually has a crush on Kel. At the advice of a classmate, Jessica takes nude photos of herself, intending to send them to Kel. Meanwhile, Cal tries calling Jacob multiple times to confide in him, but he's left unanswered. One day, while secretly cleaning the garden at his old home, Cal receives a call from Emily, under the guise of needing help with the house's pilot light, but Cal sees through the ruse, realizing that she called just because she misses him, so Cal decides to win her back. Soon after, Jacob finally returns Cal's call. Hello? Cal. Jacob. Oh my god, it's alive. Hey, sorry I kind of dropped off the grid there, pal. You left me in my hour of need, my friend. Yeah, well, I'm I'm in a bit of a situation. A pickle, if you will. I just, I got no one else to call. <laughs> I met a girl. Oh, really? I'm spending all this time with her, and she is a game changer. She's a game changer? No way. So much so I'm going to meet her mother right now. Jacob asks for advice about being in a real relationship and meeting his girlfriend's parents. Cal says he'll be fine and that he's happy for him. Jessica's mother discovers the naked photos and shows Jessica's father, Bernie, who rushes to the Weaver's residence to confront Cal about the photos, with Jessica in pursuit. Cal and his kids surprise Emily by creating a makeshift mini golf set in the backyard to remind her of their first date. During the gathering, Jacob and Hannah shows up at the house, and Hannah is revealed to be Cal and Emily's oldest daughter. Okay. I'm having trouble understanding what's going on right now. Dad, this is, uh, this is Jacob, my boyfriend. No, it's not. I was bringing him over to meet Mom. No, 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 no. I want to see the boyfriend, Can't please. Breathe. Can I take this off now? Cal, what are, you do what are you doing with the daughter that's grown up? I was 17. That's why we had to get married so young. Dad, is something you should have told me. You never wanted me to talk about my children. Cal is appalled that Jacob is dating his daughter and forbids her from seeing him. Out of nowhere, Bernie tackles Cal. Jessica arrives and tells her father that he knew nothing at all. Robbie is devastated to learn that she was in love with his dad. David arrives on scene to return Emily's sweater from a previous date. When Jacob identifies him, he punches David in the face for the pain that he caused Cal. Cal, Jacob, David, and Bernie then get into a scuffle, which is soon broken up by the police. Cal loses what relationships he had left and spends time at the bar again. Jacob visits him and confesses that he's completely in love and has begun to reevaluate his life as a result. I'm glad for you. I'm happy for you that you've changed. I think it's fantastic that you're a better man. But I've seen too much already. I know. I know. No, I know. I know too much. I know. I know. And it's Hannah. And she's too good for you. I agree. Kel says he'll never give his approval of Jacob and Hannah's relationship. Jacob gets it and leaves without harboring any ill feelings. Rather, he expresses his respect for Cal and praises him for being a great father. At Robbie's 8th grade graduation, 
Robbie gives a pessimistic speech about love. Cal stops him and begins to recount his courtship with Emily and how he'd love her from the very first day until now. I have loved her even when I've hated her. Only married couples will understand that one. And I don't know if it's going to work out. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm sorry, Robbie, I can't give you that. But I can promise you this. I will never stop trying. Because when you find the one, you never give up. With renewed faith, Robbie reaffirms his love for Jessica to the audience's applause. After the ceremony, Cal at last gives Jacob and Hannah his blessing. Jessica gives Robbie a kiss on the cheek and bids him goodbye. Cal and Emily have a laugh talking about the events that have transpired the past year. And watching them from afar, Robbie smiles optimistically. Love is crazy at times. Love can cause us to do silly things at times. But I think our takeaway is the same takeaway as Kel, given by his 13-year-old son. When you find the one, you never give up. So don't give up on your love or the search for that love today. 接下来我们来揭晓今天电影迷熟男行不行 ？Crazy stupid love 要学什么 ？To hit on somebody 就是指搭讪某人。Hit on someone 并不是指打人的意思，而是指搭讪异性。A fall for somebody 就是对某人倾心，被某人迷住了。For example, Shrek is falling for Fiona. 史瑞克被费欧娜迷住了。Now let's talk pickup lines. Here are three of my favorite pickup lines. Number one, Do you have a name or can I call you mine? 你叫什么名字？还是我直接把你叫成 mine？ 这句就是在暗示，虽然你不知道对方的名字，但是把他称为你的爱人。Number two. Do you believe in love at first sight, or should I walk by again? Love at first sight 就是我们常在爱情电影里描述的一见钟情。那这个句子就是在问对方，你相信一见钟情吗？不信的话，我再走过你一次。Number three, well, here I am. What are your two other wishes? 大家应该都知道神灯精灵的故事。那这句就是在跟对方说，你第一个愿望已实现了，就是我。接下来只剩下两个愿望了。So. Which is your favorite pickup line, or do you have a better one? Share it with us in the comments section below. I hope you've learned something useful in this episode of Cinephile. You can find more on the Fun Day website. Let's make every day a fun day.、Um, what、that? happened to your feet? What do you mean? These are my 407s. Oh, the 407s. Can I see them? Yeah. These offer a lot of support. Right. Whoa! Come on!